only my students would use sequences when they edit and they build a premiere. The process would be so much more smooth and quick and efficient and more effective. They'd be able to take one scene and edit the whole thing in pieces if they need to. And the problem is, I don't know why they don't. I ask them why they didn't use sequences when they edit in Adobe Premiere. And they look at me and they say, I didn't have time. You didn't have time. How much time did you lose by thinking you didn't have time? Seriously, the process of editing with sequences in Adobe Premiere is meant to save time. You didn't have time. Give me a break. I don't know what it takes with these kids. You tell them, here's the easiest, best way to do something. Do they follow directions? No, they do their own thing. They think they know better. They're too lazy. I don't understand. I don't know what the difference is. You say, here's the best, easiest way to do. If you do it this way, you'll have tons of time to mess around and use your cell phone or whatever. But they don't get it. In this video, we're going to be learning how to set up uh, import video, edit, and use sequences and titles in Adobe Premiere for editing video with. So to start off with, I always start with a new project. And this takes us to this window here. And what we need to do first here is browse and find where we're going to save our content at. This one's going to go in my curriculum folder. You should put it in your folder at the most secure place you can. And I've got this in this folder here. And I'm going to select folder. So that just tells us where to go. Now we should give it a title that makes sense. So I call this sequences, which is the main thing I'm trying to teach with this short film. And so what that does next is it wants to know what size sequences should we use. This refers to the frame rate, the audio quality, and the size of the frame. I'm going to be using a widescreen in this. I'm going to go to 32 kilohertz. 48 kilohertz is above CD quality, which is 44 kilohertz. So 32 is good enough for this. And I'm going to name my first sequence 01 titles, just so I get in the habit of thinking about what order they should go in and what's in them. Um, so I've got a sequence, I've got a film, it's opening up the project, it's setting things in place, and this is my workspace. So here's my um, source clip, my timeline is going to go here. Let's build some more sequences before we do much more. So I'm thinking about the film I'm making, and 01 titles is uh, the first sequence where my titles are going to go. The second one's going to be 02. Uh, I'm going to call this 02A, in fact, just so these will be all my main uh, scenes, and I'm going to call this scene one. So that's scene one. So the next one is going to be 02B, scene two. I've got three scenes in my film. I'm going to call this 02B. And the reason I'm naming them this way is because I want them to be in order by time my project window. Okay, so no matter what I do, they're going to appear either forwards or backwards. Uh, I'm going to make another one called uh, 02. To C, scene three. So this absolutely puts them in the order I want them to be in. Now, finally, I'm going to add in two more sequences. One for my credits sequence. I'm going to call this 03 credits. And finally, one more. And this will be the master sequence. So I'm just going to call this master. And I might even put in all caps just to remind myself that it's so important. And they all should have the same setup. So a good idea is to organize my work. So new bin, I'm going to call this sequences. And organizing my content is essential. Because eventually you have so many clips in your film, especially if you're doing a film that's longer than a minute, longer than two minutes, longer than 30 seconds, you're going to have tons of content in here. So I'm going to use folders to work my stuff through. Let's make another one. I'm going to call this footage with an F. And so all my footage will go in there. And I might make another one for graphics. And I can right click and choose new bin. And we call this graphics. There we go. I may need more stuff later, but right now this is good. So I'm going to go to footage and right click and import my footage. Now there's the import. And I can actually import more than one thing at a time. So I'm going to choose my documents folder where I stashed my footage. Uh, it's in my curriculum folder. It's in the sequence of short film. Here's my footage. Now this film is very short. It's strictly for instructional purposes. And you may, of course, have lots and lots of sequences. So the more you organize, for example, if you have 
multiple days of shooting going on, you may put each day in a different folder. That might be a good idea so you know how it's organized instead of just numerically. You can also rename these as you see fit. So for example, if I open this one up and play it, okay, and this might be play. noise in the background. So I might call this one Scene 1 Master. So I'm just going to call this Scene 1 Master. Now that's not essential, but it sure makes things a lot easier. And we call this Scene 1 uh, Single Right. Because that one shoots to the right. Camera right. Okay. I'm going to call this one Scene 2. This one is uh, scene two. So the first scene two is just a, a shot test. So scene two, A, and then this last one will be scene three. So I can na name these. The more specificity I put in there in short terms, the better it will be. So I'm going to go to scene one. And scene one, as you can see, has two camera shots in it. So I can drag this in here. And I need to cut some of this out. Now it's asking me a question. This clip does not match the sequence of settings. Change the sequence to match the, the clip settings, and I'm like, no, keep the existing settings because I set those up for a reason as they should be. Now, the sequence of the scene itself, the shot, has a much higher resolution. Now, the problem that that creates is it zooms in too far. So now we're going to right click and we're going to scale the frame size. So next, I'm going to go to where the scene begins after walking into my own shot. And let's see if he starts talking there. Only my students would use. Sequences when they edit, they build it from here. Okay. And so that the whole thing would be so much more effective. And there's the end of the scene. So I'm trimming this off. I can also use the razor blade tool. Okay, the razor blade tool, what it does is it cuts at the timeline. And I can use the arrow tool to select and delete. Okay, so I'm going to move this scene over to the beginning. And I do have another shot of the same thing. So if I take this and drop it into my timeline, I may want to break that shot up a little bit. First, of course, I need to right click and then scale the frame size. And take this off. It's supposed to be the same footage or the same scene, same dialogue. It was kind of unscripted. Cardinal Sin. And and then this and put them all together at the end. So there's that scene. Now, what I want to be able to do is change the shots and maybe zoom up on some things. So we're using uh, triangle coverage, and here I've got only two points of the triangle. But I'm going to cut this up. Only my students would use sequences when they edit the ability from here. So I'm going to cut that shot there. And using the arrow tool, Shortcut is V. I'm going to drag that over. Let's take this over. I'm using separate tracks to try to make sense of this a little bit more. Let's see. I want to zoom in on this. To zoom in, grab the bottom rail there and move it over. And that changes the zoom on the timeline. So now I'm going to find a piece to cut this off at. If only my students would use sequences when they had edit video in Adobe Premiere, the process would be so much more smooth and quick and efficient. Go back here. If only my students would use sequences when they had edit video in Adobe Premiere. And I'm going to cut that off there because I already said that part once. So part of the process of this is to double check your work and make sure you're not repeating yourself. I've had a couple of films come in where students are repeating parts of dialogue because they're not editing it effectively. Let's check it. If only my students would use sequences when they edit in Adobe Premiere. Process would be so much more smooth and quick and efficient. They'd be able to take one. They'd be able to. They'd be, so I'm gonna cut that one off there. Arrow tool, move this over. Take this one and move it over. Let's see what I can take out of this one. Their work would be so much smoother and quicker and more effective. So I'm going to cut that there. I can also just drag this over to cut it off. So now I'm checking. 
students would use sequences when they edit, they build it from here. The process would be so much more smooth and quick and efficient and more effective. Now there's kind of a jump cut really between these two shots because we're essentially using the same framing from two different angles. So this really, the second one, would be a great place to use a headshot. So it's not going to come out very good, but I'm going to use effect controls. And I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to ring up the scale. And let's bring this so the face is in there. And I'm thinking about composition here. So I've got this. Now, as you can see, the results of zooming in at this level, not having planned it out, are um, not great. They're, they, lose, they lose some of the uh, resolution. The process would be so much more smooth and quick and efficient and more effective. So I'm going to cut that there. I'm using the tool. Now my other shots and my other scenes are only one shot each. So I'm primarily trying to show you guys how to use... They'd be able to take one scene. They'd be able to take one scene, edit the whole thing in pieces if they need to. So I'm going to cut that there. And this one again, I'm going to take and... Zoom in, not quite as far, or maybe I should, here's the thing I could do, like if I take and I go back to this clip where I zoomed in, I can right click and choose copy. So I want the shots to mostly match. And if I paste attributes, it takes that same thing in there. So I've done this, and then that way I don't have to work so hard every time to do it. So I can copy and paste attributes, like scaling from one to the next. So there's a scene. Now imagine if you have a scene that's maybe 30 seconds or a minute long, you can have a lot more cuts in there. And it becomes kind of challenging to work through all these pieces. So now I'm going to go to the scene two. And I don't have three shots on this one. It was me, myself, and I out there. So I'm going to go to where the shot starts. That's my own camera person. And as you can see, i got to unzoom or zoom and scale the frame size. So I want to get this. You know what that was just for practice to see if the framing was right. Let's try this one. So again, I have to keep existing settings and scale the frame size. So using sequences is not only easy, it's easier and more efficient and more effective. And it will save you time. So let's cut that one there. Let's delete the first part. We don't need that part. So we're just trying to get your film to the parts that need to tell the story. I didn't have to. And the problem is, I don't know why they don't. I asked them why they didn't use sequences when they edit in Adobe Premiere. And they look at me and they say, I didn't have time. You didn't have time. How much time did you lose by thinking you didn't have time? Seriously, the process of editing with sequences in Adobe Premiere is meant to save time. You didn't have time. Give me a, give me a break. Okay, so I should have paused before I got up. So now there's that scene. Now we go to scene three. I'm going to edit it down. Keep existing settings. Scale the frame size. All right. <laughs> So now this scene, but they don't get it, is done. So now when I want to put these together, let's take titles. Just in case you haven't learned how to do titles yet, I'm going to, uh, new item, let's see, that's going to have to be that folder, this new title, and we call this title. So this is pretty much the whole process of editing, really. Okay, I'm going to center this. I can even use some tools on the left over here to center it. I got that. So now I have a sequence for my titles. 
I'm not going to worry right now about uh, my credits because I'm really just trying to spend some time showing you guys how to work this. So now that I've got three sequences plus my titles, now I go to master and I go to my sequences and I'll bring in 01 titles. I'm going to take scene one, scene two, scene three, and assuming I have credits, I'll take credits and put them in there. Not a bad idea even if you stagger these so you can see where the edits are. So now I've got the whole scene and the whole film put together, except for the credits. Now to finish the thing off, you're going to choose File, Export, Media. And you're going to choose uh, a location to save it at. So output name should be in Documents. I'm going to put this in my curriculum folder in Sequence of Short Film. I'm going to give this a name. Now, giving a name is really important. If you just leave the sequence or the whatever name, you should put your name in here. Your last name, your ID number, something. Okay, tell it what you want the name to be. And pick the correct format. I'm going to go to H.264 standard. And I might want to check that the video settings are correct. should be 720 by 480. You can either click export or Q. They both do about the same thing. Uh, sometimes Q is handy because it allows you to do other stuff at the same time. So I can go back and, and edit other things in Premiere while Media Encoder is cranking out my film. So once I get here, I click on the play button or the, the go and the queue is recording. It's generating a new file at the location and the name which I specified earlier. And that's the whole process of editing your film uh, minus, of course, the credits. So that's what you should be doing, especially if you're in my class. Thank you.